What's going on, everybody? This is Devon Marquise West, a.k.a. Mark West from Study with Mark. And today we're going to be talking about how to pass your biology club exam. Uh, we got a lot of material to cover, so I'm going to do my best to make these videos like no more than I'll say like 15 minutes. Um, this is probably going to be like a four part series uh, because this exam is just it covers so much information. Um, with that being said, uh, fear not. Um, we're going to go over the entire breakdown from the college board, um, line item by line item. And I'm going to give you exactly what you need to know for that line item. Uh, let me give you an example. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So molecular and cellu cellular biology, we're going to start here. 33% of your exam. Obviously, it's a big chunk. There's no getting around that. Um, I'm going to break down simple chemical reactions and bonds, properties of water, chemical structure of carbohydrates, origin of life, so on and so forth. I'm going to give you what you need to study for each one of these subtopics, and I'm going to do that for the whole breakdown, all right, straight from the college board, and I'm going to break it down to you, all right, from a test taker's perspective, somebody who's taken this exam before, and um, just from a, 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 a learning the information, you know, um, so let's go ahead and dive right in. I don't want to waste any more of your time. What do you need to know for a simple chemical, simple, co <laughs> simple, co what do you need to know for simple chemical reactions and bonds? Uh, you need to know chemical composition of organisms. All right. You need to understand what car carbohydrates are. You need to understand what proteins are, lipids, nucleic acids. Um, you need to understand the process when we talk about sim simple chemical reactions. You need to understand that chemical reactions in cells involve breaking and forming chemical bonds. And bonds can be covalent, all right, and ionic. You got your covalent and ionic bonds. You need to know the difference between the two, what they're for, all right? And that is going to be simple chemical reactions and bonds. So study those things, take notes, do some deep diving into those things. Speaking of deep diving, um, I'm going to be deep diving into each and every one of these topics in future videos. All right, it's going to be my deep dive series, so be on the lookout for that. Like and subscribe to the channel, and you'll get notified when those videos drop. Now, moving on to properties of water. Again, this is just a brief overview, just giving you your starting point, hopefully giving you a foundation to build off of. Um, what do you need to know for properties of water? Um, you need to know what cohesion and adhesion is. Um, that's dealing with water molecules and how they're attached to each other, so you need to understand that. You need to know what high heat capacity is. Um, and you also need to know what uh, solvent properties are. Um, you need to understand density. What is that? What is that all about in terms of uh, biology and chemical compositions? Um, and we talk about chemical structure. So let's talk about chemical structures of carbohydrates, what you need to know. Well, you need to know that um, carbohydrates are organic compounds composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. All right. Um, in a ratio of one to one. All right. You need to understand that. And then also your chemical structure of uh, monosaturide um, or glucose. OK, so uh, you need to know that. And then moving on to lipids, you need to know what lipids are. Lipids are a diverse molecule that include fats, oils, um, phospho phospholipids and steroids. So you need to understand the chemical composition, car uh, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, um, and uh, the uh, chemical structure of a triglyceride, that's a certain type of lipid. Um, for example, common triglycerides like olive oil consist of uh, glycerol bonded to three fatty acid chains. All right, so that's just a, an example. Then proteins, you need to understand that proteins are composed of amino acids, and uh, they're the building blocks for um, muscle fibers, right, building your muscles, and each amino acid consists of an amino group. Uh, and you need to understand the nature of how that works, the chemical structure of an, an amino acid. You need to also understand and know that. Um, then nucleic acids. What is a nucleic acid? Uh, nucleic acid, DNA, dehydroxy. De I always get this wrong. <laughs> Deoxyribonucleic acid and RNA ribonucleic acid. You need to understand the difference between the two um, and what they do and the chemical structure of the nucleotide. And then... Um, Origin of life. Moving on to the next topic. You see how what I mean by overview, right? I'm just giving you what you need to know, and you got to go do 
the 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 further research, all right, for this overview. If you're this video is really meant for like self starters, people that just want the info, they want the inside tips, and they can go and build their own study process, study guide, however you want it. Um, anyway, origins of life. You need to understand what um, abiogenesis is, all right, chemical evolution. You need to understand uh, the RNA world hypothesis, okay? Basically, it's a hypothesis that suggests that ribonucleic acid played a, a very central role in the origin of life. You need to understand what hydrothermal vent hypothesis is, and also you need to understand what uh, panspermia is. All right, so that is going to do it for chemical composition of organisms. All right, next we are going to talk about cells. All right, cells, structure, and function of cell organelles. Here's what you need to know for this particular uh, topic. Um, you need to understand what a cell membrane is, okay, the plasma membrane, overall structure of a cell. Um, you need to understand the different parts of your cell. So you have your nucleus, you have your endoplasmic rectilium, okay, you have your ribosomes, mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, vacuoles, uh, chloroplast, all of those things, you need to understand the structure and the function of, of each and every one of those, okay? Um, moving on to properties of a cell membrane. All right, now we're right here. You need to understand what your uh, phospholipid bi bilayer is. You need to understand the proteins in the cell membrane. Uh, you need to understand what selectively permeable means. Fluid mosaic model, you need to understand that. Cholesterol, um, and you need to understand carbohydrates in, in the terms of properties of cell membranes. Uh, comparisons of prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, okay? Uh, this is right here. You need to understand what a prokaryotic cell is. Um, you need to understand the nucleus, the membrane, bound organelles, size of a prokaryotic cell, reproduction, cell wall. Then you need to know what a eukaryotic cell is, okay? And the same thing, nucleus, membrane, bound organelles, size, reproduction, cell wall, um, cytoplasmic streaming, mitochondria, and choroplasts. Once again, guys, if you find a lot of this to be a little bit, like, overbearing, you feel like it's, it's a lot of info because it is, uh, fear not. I have everything that I'm talking about right now, I have it all dialed in, uh, defined, and very, like, thoroughly uh, addressed um in my <laughs> thoroughly addressed basically i got everything you need all right so if you if you need something already buttoned up you can just jump in the description i got you covered but um keep watching for more info on the beautiful wonderful things that you need to study let's talk about enzymes and then i think i'm going to end it here and then we'll get into the next section so um what do you need to know for enzymes you need to know enzymes are biological molecules that act as catalysts Speeding up chemical reactions in living organisms, okay? That's the gist of what an enzyme is. And then beyond that, you need to understand the proteins of an enzyme. Um, you need to understand how the catalyst works, all right? That word in terms of enzyme, when we talk about enzymes, what, what do we mean by catalyst? Um, specificity, okay? Um, you need to know that enzymes are highly specific for their subtraits, all right? Uh, meaning that they typically catalyze a particular chemical reaction or group of re related reactions. Um, this is uh, often referred to as the lock and key, uh, lock and key model where enzyme, uh, which is the lock, binds to a substrate, the key, all right, with precision. So you need to understand how that works. Uh, reusability, you need to understand the concept of reusability, and then pH and temperature sensitivity, and then uh, the cofactors and uh, coenzymes, all right, you need to understand those. And then uh, when we talk about um, the enzyme subtrate complex, uh, what we're talking about is the enzyme subtrate complex as a fundamental concept of enzymology, okay? It refers to the temporary association between an enzyme and its subtrates during a chemical reaction. So you need to know how that works, all right? You need to know how the subtrate works, active site, the formation of the complex, and again, the catalyst, product formation, and enzyme recycling, okay? Hope you guys are taking notes. Let me take a note. All right. When we talk about the role of coenzymes, what do we need to know for that? Well, first thing we need to know what a coenzyme is. All right. Coenzymes are organic molecules often derived from vitamins. Um, they assist enzymes in catalyzing specific reactions. 
all right? You need to understand and know what cofactor carriers are. You need to know donation or acceptance of electrons or protons, how that process works. Um, you need to understand the subtrait activation and uh, the car carbonyl, carbonyl group transfer, um, methyl group transfer, and carbon dioxide transport. And then, real quick, examples of some coenzymes would be NAD, um, uh, nicotin, nicotin, no, goodness gracious, uh, nico, nico, tenamide, adenine, dinucleotide, okay, NAD, uh, flavin, adenine, dinucleotide, uh, coenzyme A, thiamine, uh, pyrophosphate, biotin, S adin, <laughs> adin <laughs> Lord have mercy. S adenosylmethanine. Lord. Sam. Okay. S adenyl. Let's learn this together. It's part of the reason why I do this is so I can actually learn uh more in depth myself. S adenyl adenosylmethanine. That's a tough one though. That is a tough one. I'm not even gonna hold you. But um it's Sam, okay? S A D E N O S Y L M E T H I O N I N E. Okay? You need to know that. Coenzymes. Coenzyme Q. All right? Um, and that's going to do it for examples of coenzymes. All right? Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't hurt to uh, get good at pronouncing those things too. Or inorganic fact, or in, in, uh, bleh, man, I can't speak today. Inorganic cofactors. Um, what do we talk about, or what do we mean when we talk about inorganic cofactors? We're talking about metal ions or small inorganic molecules that help enzymes in catalyzing reactions by assisting in substrate binding or participating in reaction, the reaction itself. So for this, you need to understand um, the concept of stabilizing protein structure, um, catalysts of reactions, uh, the redox of reactions and structural support. Okay. Um, let's finish up with inhibition and regulation. Um, inhibition and regulation are fundamental concepts in biochemistry and biology. Describing the control and modulation of enzymatic reactions and cellular processes. So what do we need to know for this? Inhibition and regulation. Um, we need to know that Inhibition refers to the process of slowing down or preventing en enzymatic, enzymatic reactions by various molecules or factors. So we need to understand what competitive inhibition is, and we need to understand what non-competitive inhibition is, and we need to know the difference between the two. Okay, regulation. Um, what is regulation? This refers to the control of the cellular process, including its enzymatic, 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 however you want to pronounce that, reactions. Um, well, not however you want to pronounce it. However it is pronounced, I'm just kind of giving different variations. To main, let me reread that. All right, so regulation. Regulation refers to the control of cellular processes, including enzymatic, enzymatic reactions to maintain homeostasis and respond to changing conditions. Uh, so for this, you need to understand feedback inhibition. You need to understand what um, aloso Allosteric regulation is allo allosteric allosteric regulation. I believe that's how you pronounce that. You need to understand what allosteric regulation is. It's spelled A L L O S T E R I C regulation. Allosteric regulation. Um, you need to understand what covalent modification is, uh, gene expression and protein synthesis, and then feedback loops. Okay, feedback loops um, involving signal transduction pathways and feedback mechanisms uh, you need to understand how those things work and that's going to do it for enzymes i'm going to finish it here we're a little over 15 minutes um part two we are going to talk about energy transformation um and we will continue on through cellular and molecular biology and yeah i'll see you guys in part two I um, hope this video was helpful for you. hope it was useful. If you did find it useful and valuable, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And definitely leave me a comment with some constructive criticism. I'm all about feedback. I love that very much. And um, happy studying, guys. I'm here for you if you need help. 
with anything, uh, resources, jump in the description. Or if you need to reach out to me, you can do so. Um, I'll leave my contact info in the description as well. And I'll see you in part two.